Well, this was the uh, second work, you know, out from, uh, from the Belmont. So I don't think we'll make any final, final decisions until after next week's breezes. But uh, I thought everyone worked well enough that, uh, you know, the ones that are under consideration still are. I think, uh, you know, we had some really, really good works this morning. And we had a few that need to work a little better next week. Who are the few that you would like to see work better? Um, I thought micromanaged work was uh, a little hard to analyze because Palace Mouse just worked unbelievably well, and he was sort of chasing him the whole way around there, which uh, when, you, when you break down the time of it and everything, I think most horses would have been chasing him around there the way he went this morning. But uh, I thought we need to see a little better work from him. And uh, you know, he's, I'd say he's the one that's on the bubble probably. And Midnight Taboo? thought he worked really well. It's two good works for him, so I think another one. And, uh, you know, of course, we discussed it all with Mike, but I'd say he's, he's definitely looking to work his way into the mix. And unlimited budget. And she's a go, you think? I think so. You know, we'll talk to talk to Mike a little more about it and uh, see if he wants to, you know, try a filly in there. It's always, uh, you know, a, a challenge for a filly to run uh, against the Colts. But uh, the thing that she has going for her is, is uh, she's a big, strong filly. She carries, uh, you know, plenty of condition. And generally those types, uh, you know, have a better chance when they meet the males. So I think she worked well enough this morning to uh, certainly stay in the mix. The work of the day for you? Um, I thought, you know, we had some really good works. I thought revolutionary this morning early. It's his first work back, and uh, I was really, really pleased with the way he went. Galloped out great, and uh, what I was really happy about was watching him cool out. He, he's just a horse that has a very high natural level of fitness, and uh, um, you hear people say all the time, oh, he wouldn't have blown out a match, but he literally didn't even take a deep breath when he came back here. Uh, so I was really pleased with him. I thought Palace Mallows probably had the most impressive work of the day. What are you well, looking Palace for from Mallows. him now with the Blake as well? Um, I don't know what I don't know what he'll do. Honestly, I mean, I think he's the kind of horse that uh, he should have shown more speed in the Risen Star than he did. He should have shown more speed in the Louisiana Derby than he did, and he shouldn't have shown as much speed in the Derby as he did. So, um, but I think he's the kind of horse that he can fall into a nice spot and get him into a good rhythm. That uh, you know, I've seen him do stuff like he did this morning that indicates to me he's, he's good enough to, to pull one of these off. Pretty much after the Derby, did you decide the blinkers would come off him? Pretty much, yeah. Um, in fact, to the Philly, now that you obviously have experience and winning experience with the Philly and the Belmont, what type of force would it take in a Philly? Well, I think Rags to Riches was a, was a special case. Um, you know, she was truly, truly bred to to win the Belmont. Um, you know, she uh, half brother won it by AP Indy who won it. I mean, it was just you know, it was a race that she was just meant for. So. Um, Got to think it through a little more with unlimited budget. I think the street sense part of her pedigree is strong. The bottom side maybe doesn't carry her quite as far, but you know, we'll just have to see how she continues to do. How will the rider situation play out with overanalyze and with unlimited budget, assuming they both go? Uh, some we're still firming up. I mean, we know that uh, we've got right now Mike Smith on Palace Mouse, and uh, we got Johnny holding the race for someone. We got Javier on. Uh, on Revolutionary, and you know, I think I'm going to have Garrett Gomez right one, and still waiting to see what Rosie Napravnik's situation is. So, you know, she's won on a limited budget before, that's a possibility. I moved from Mr. Campbell, how can you not? He's, uh, you know, he's going he's, he's to win a big, he's, he's gonna win a big race one day, whether it's the Garrett, the Jim Dandy, the Travers, he's, he's going to win a big race. Trust me. Keep that, he's going to win a big race. But for mine, um, I think micromanage will probably be um, looking at the easy goer. I think overanalyze. Uh, I think Todd said uh, not the most zealous. I would say lazy. Boss. They uh, Arano told me when he won the Arkansas Derby by six lengths, he thought he was done at the three-eighths pole until he hit him two or three times. And then he realized, okay, he was pricked and he just kind of took off. So um, I think that's good, especially I think in a mile and a half race where. Uh, um, you know, you're just gonna, you don't want to go too fast. So being lazy, observing your, your, uh, I guess your, 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 your one for the last quarter of a mile, the last three eighths, probably will be good. So I think it might actually fit his style. Unlimited budget is, she's got like two personalities. When she works inside, she doesn't work that good. When she works outside, she works very good. We won Midnight Tebow on the outside today. Next week, we'll move it to the outside. Um, you look good. You know, I'm sorry. You look good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so she'll work outside next week. You know, I mean, the bottom line is, you know, you want to run the week after first dream of Julia, and you want to run the mile and a half first dream 
Anyways, I guess that's the question you gotta recall. She might be the best three old Philly or Cold combined. Uh, she's a freak. And then Midnight Tattoos, I mean, he, he, he worked. I, I thought he worked. Out of, out of all my hosts, I thought he worked the best. You know, the thing with him is, you know, um, you get aggressive and put a horse that's had two starts this year and three starts in his life yep. in the Belmont Stakes and he's bred for a mile and a half. What do you play at the more conservative route? You go easy go. You know, if he wins, you know, if he comes in third in the easy go, I, I guess I, I can say I'm glad he didn't win the belt. I wasn't in the Belmont. If he wins the easy go by 10 lengths, I'll say, what the hell did I do? Maybe I should have put him in the Belmont. So, you know, it's something you got to figure out as an owner. He's only had three starts. He's got to win in two seconds. But, uh, you know, if you look at the train today, I mean, he trained great last week with Overanalyze. He trained great this week with uh, with unlimited budget. And next week will probably be with uh, House Mount. You think he's you know, how good that horse is? Yeah, I mean, he's still so lightly raced and he's just he's finding himself really. Yeah, I mean, he qualifies for a one of them allowance, but so does Normandy Invasion, so does Palace Malice, and so do a lot of other horses. I mean, you know, you got to make the decision on what you want to do. So, you know, I think, I think, <clears throat> yeah, it, it's a tough decision. I mean, it's a, you know, it's, what are they, it's be 14, 15 horses, but I think, uh, the only thing we learned today was that uh, micromanage will be the easy go. Or Midnight Taboo has done nothing the last two weeks to say not to put him in the Belmont. And the limited budget is a tough decision because you want to put her in the best spot. And, you know, she's a big, big filly, but, you know, you're either racing, you know. The one thing about Todd, when, you, when you're with Todd, you know, people say, you know, is it, is it tough to, you know, when you've got five horses in the Derby and four horses in the Oaks? To me, it's an advantage because you know what the other horses are training, how they're doing. And, do you want to run against Dream and Julia, or do you want to run against the boys? And you know, we'll see what happens. Definitely. They got to try and figure out if the her sire side is going to come out at a mile and a half, or the dam side is going to come out. The dam side should be done at a mile. <laughs> the sire side, you can probably run two miles. Right. So you know, you'll, you'll you'll find that. Yeah. And it's a funny race. I mean, we all know that. You know, typical 25 and 50. You know, 114 fractions are not normal. Right. You know, so you know, you got to be close. And uh, it's your big filly. So uh, so so. I mean, you know, this is the one race. You know, I mean, you know, people get Derby fever. I don't think I would get Derby fever, but I get Belmont Stakes fever because this is the race. You know, I've been coming here for 30 years, Belmont and Aqueduct. I get Belmont Stakes fever. Plus, you rode one now, too. Yeah, well, what do you mean? Stay thirsty. Well, don't remind me about that. I kind of, <laughs> the year of psychology uh, sessions before I got over that one. That was a tough one.